Testing one, two, testing one, two. Do you want to read them? No, you can read them. No, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. You can do your head. Are you going to drop it? Okay. In awe of your composure during labor, would you recommend epidural? Yeah, definitely. Now, the next time, I don't think I would get it the next time because apparently your labor is supposed to be faster. And I, I lasted a, like a good few hours with my contractions. So I think I'd be able to do it with, without the epidural. And hopefully my vagina is like stretched out by then a bit more so my body knows what to do. But like she wasn't far down enough at all. But what if you have to get a PZ up me again? And you don't have enough drill. Oh Jesus, that would be a nightmare. Okay. But I'm probably more likely to tear as well with yeah. the episi episiotomy. I think it's something you'd have to decide on the day. Yeah. Because like, like you didn't plan on getting enough drill. Yeah. How do you describe the love you have for her? You go first. Oh, you go first. No, you go first. It's hard. I don't think you can de describe it. Like obviously it's a love that we've never felt before. Yeah. It's like every single second of the day you just want to look at her. She feels like the most precious thing in the world. It's hard. It is hard. We can come back to it. Just do the next one. Did you use any products to help prevent stretch marks? Yeah, I used the my expert midwife, the expert midwife uh, belly bump like serum thing, and I also used just like random oils that we have around the house if I came out of the shower. But I think it's mostly genetic, and obviously like the size of your baby and how big you grow. Yeah, you used so, the massage bar as well. Oh yeah, a, a lush massage bar too at like the start of my pregnancy. But I was just consistent with it and did it all the time, so maybe that helped. But my mom also didn't get stretch marks, so it could be genetic. So yeah, I don't know. Possibly. Best moment during labor besides the angel coming into the world? When I got so, the epidural. <laughs> I think there's any good moments or <laughs> When I got the epidural. The bath as well. The bath Imagine. was lovely, yeah. And the shot after the shot, <laughs> the stir fry. Pretty so much. I was like in the middle of getting contractions and the cafeteria people came around and they were like, what do you want? For they were taking lunch orders and I literally couldn't speak. Like I was writhing in pain. Like, I don't want that. And they were like, no, just take, just get something, just yeah. get something. And they're like, ah, you it. will, you will, come on. It was like Father Ted, and like, I like, want. fuck off. And I literally, I couldn't speak, like, I couldn't open my eyes, I was in so much pain, and I knew I was going to go into the labour suite, like, at any minute. So I was like, I definitely won't be here, so there's no point in taking my order. They were like, do you want chicken Kiev or something else? Um, and I was like, no, I'm allergic to dairy, it's fine. They were like, well, we could do something up for you. We could do, like, a chicken, the chicken Kiev. And I was like, no, I'm a vegan, it doesn't matter. And they were like, oh like just lingering around like, while I was contracting and I was like no that was the only time I felt like actually rude because I, I was nice to everyone yeah. before then but then I was like then you brought in this little bowl of what looked like maggots and they're like here's a store oh fry. it was horrible Ugh. It was and you just put coriander all over <laughs> Yeah, rotten. yeah. No, I obviously didn't eat any of it so best moment for me obviously other than the birth was when the epidural kicked in because <laughs> it was just no, because it's just so hard to look at you and like helplessly look yeah. at you suffer and like there's literally nothing you can do can't even yeah. touch you because you're like don't like obviously you just like fuck off yeah yeah did you instantly connect with the baby yeah 100 percent. i did i've heard 100%. a story yeah i've heard of stories where like it takes a while to fall in love with them and you're just like in survival mode and scared but i felt well i was connected to her while i was pregnant so it wasn't a huge change for me and i didn't get the rush of emotion say that you did when yeah, i yeah. gave birth because i was like on drugs but i got it like the day after basically and yeah. i spent a lot of time alone with her because jason can't stay at night time in the labor ward so she was kind of like the only person i knew she was the only person i knew there that was like also scary at the same time because i had to do everything on my own but yeah. i feel like it came so naturally to me like i wasn't at any yeah, stage you were, actually, yeah. i wasn't uh, at any stage being like oh my fucking god i have no idea what i'm doing the only time i'd say it was scary for you was the first night when you literally couldn't walk because of the epidural oh i could yeah you're on your own so because i uh i gave birth to her in the evening time so then then by the time i was in the labor ward the visiting hours were over so i was completely on my own then and there was only one night nurse on for like 30 people that had given birth and it was a really busy day that day like i couldn't go into a birthing suite because someone else was in there like they you know what i mean yeah. it was all full up and i couldn't stand up i couldn't walk to the bathroom without someone like assisting me so i obviously it was really dangerous to for me to get up to like lift her into the bed yeah. if she needed to be fed luckily on the first night they don't need to be fed that often not as often as the second night yeah she was close to feeding because she was she was just in the bed with me then the whole night but it was really sore when the um painkillers wore off the next day but you're still kind of like you don't feel any pain the first night you just feel like a bit paralyzed but you don't feel any pain because the support the thing you put at my bum yeah the pill yeah so you don't feel it that's fine i remember in uh in juno she says motherhood begins the moment you find out you're pregnant a fatherhood begins the moment you see the baby yeah and obviously i felt like like a father and stuff throughout the pregnancy and stuff and obviously it's like in love with her then but it's just different when you see her like mm. when she came out it was just crazy yeah because like i could feel her kicks mm. and like 
feel her heartbeat inside me and stuff whereas you couldn't like yeah. oh so it would have been harder are you bleeding much so the first two days i would have to wear like two pads because you're bleeding so much but like i've nearly completely stopped bleeding now like i have a few spot a spot just every now and again yeah just like the odd time but like i just wear period underwear like i'm not wearing any pads but that's only since the past few days like for the first week and a half you were bleeding a lot weren't you yeah but it was like the same as a period like yeah. you change your pad every time you peed but you wouldn't need to like you wouldn't need to go oh i need to change my pad even Is without that, peeing remember when you'd show me your pads is that how much it would be from a period as well yeah really yeah how's your love for each other changed since having a wee one yeah 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. like i didn't think i could love you anymore and then literally it's crazy like it's just you can't even describe it because i had no idea what to expect either from you being a parent like i'd never seen you hold a yeah. baby or anything before so it's like falling in love with you all over again mm. <laughs> how did it feel to be handed the baby for the first time for the both of you my umbilical cord was really short your eyes are all red <laughs> my umbilical cord was really short so she only kind of reached like up to my um chest and she was covered in merconium so they kind of had to take her away yeah. pretty fast to get the suction thing in her lungs and then obviously i had to be stitched up as well so it wasn't like the most romantic experience that yeah. everyone has after you give birth i'd say she was only there for about 10 seconds on my chest and yeah. then whisked away but jason got to like hold her hand and all yeah while she was the getting. first time i got to hold her brought like i was terrified obviously because my legs felt like jelly from because when she came out, I was like, it was just yeah crazy. Um, but then I had to dress her, and I was like, it was being so gentle with her, and I was trying to. But obviously, she was like it's squirming, squirming the yeah. shake, and I was like trying to like not like hurt her. And think, <laughs> that took me ages, but uh, yeah, it was terrifying. The first time we got the hold of obviously it was like outweighed by the love for it. Yeah, but, and then as soon as she was dressed, she was like she was feeding on me so yeah, yeah. it was really nice and peaceful then she was, yeah. it wasn't crying at all congratulations to you both is breastfeeding sore honestly it really hurt yeah it hurts your nipples for the first week i'd say depending on how your baby latches i think like she would latch differently on both my nipples because they're kind of slightly different shapes so on my left nipple it's way sore but now she like has a really deep latch and obviously my your nipples kind of like get used to it and they like toughen up so you lose a bit of more, you lose the sensation a bit more. But you don't lose complete feeling in your nipples. So it's not sore at all anymore. Like yeah. you do still feel something. Like you obviously feel someone sucking on your nipple. Yeah. You've probably gotten your nipple sucked before. Like so you know what it feels like. Like it's not sore at all now. Well it's, I'd say it's sore when the, with Joe when they get real heavy when, you, when they fill up. When you're when she's your feet. Right? Sometimes my nipples just randomly get a sharp pain when I haven't fed her in a, in a while. Yeah. But it only like lasts a second. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> when I'm feeding her from one boob you can feel the milk come into the other one and that sometimes hurts hurts it feels exactly like how you'd imagine uh like lo loads of um liquid rushing through a really really tiny tube but like there's nerve endings in it mm. do you know what i mean mm. so something mm. big going through something small yeah. but i'm assuming that's just because they're like tubes that have never been used before yeah, in my yeah, boobs yeah, yeah, yeah. so that'll obviously they'll loosen a bit and get bigger and not be sore um what pump are you using so my auntie got me like an electric pump i don't know the name of it but it's like expensive so i'm, I'm not going to recommend it because i haven't even used it but i'm using the haka like i haven't used it the past few days because she's been cluster feeding constantly so there's no point but i have like two i have used the haka like two or three times in a day and i really recommend that because it just it catches it has like a natural suction to it but it also wouldn't interfere i don't think with your supply if you don't use it that much and it catches the letdown so like you have a bit extra and if you want to introduce a few bottles uh, to your baby it's a good way of like getting expressing breast milk fast without using an electric pump you probably start pumping soon will you when she, six weeks six yeah weeks, if she does take to the bottle but if she yeah. doesn't i don't mind what's her birth chart and what are your and jason's sun moon rising when she was born i was obviously after a while i spent time where i killed said we had to get him a sashi for her because she couldn't like eat the toast right because it was like dairy and uh when i was waiting for the order of a sashi i looked up her moon and rising straight away <laughs> so she's a virgo sun leo moon and aquarius rising which is i don't have any of that in my chart at all i'm a taurus sun with a scorpio moon and a libra rising and you're a libra rising as well i'm a sagittarius moon and Libra Sun and Libra Rising. Do you have any feelings towards people holding her and stuff, like give it back its mind? I thought I would, but I don't no. care. I don't care at all. Cause it's just been family and close friends yeah. that have seen her, so. Yeah, like I'd give her to Searsha and be like, we well, hold her for a second yeah. and just like leave her there for an hour. I'm yeah. like, you're running around doing things. So no, not at all. No. But now sometimes we fight over holding her. That's because you hug her sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> How did Jason react to labor and birth? My dad fainted when I was born. I was pretty calm during the labor. I thought you were, um, you did great. You, I, I was just, expecting like- I didn't really like, know what to do with my hands and stuff. Obviously I wanted to hold your hand and stuff, but I didn't know if, if yeah, if you wanted me to or not. I was real, I'm real like bad with blood and stuff, but I was able to look and see the whole thing happen. And like, I think the adrenaline just kicked in. Yeah. And obviously when it's your own baby and your own partner giving birth, like you know, like when we were watching the rotunda, like I couldn't look at the, oh, it was the women's. Oh, there's like C-sections yeah. and all. 
But um, but you saw everything. Yeah, when it, when it's your own partner and your own baby, like it literally doesn't even phase you at all. Mm. Um, and like the second she came out, it was like just a rush of emotions and everything felt real light and my legs were like jelly. Mm. And it was like, it was inconsolable. <laughs> <laughs> um, how was the hospital uh, birthing experience? Would you consider a home birth in the future? My whole labour experience was so nice, except for the you not being allowed in the waiting room with me. Mm. Even though, like, I went back to the rotunda recently for an appointment, and there were partners in in the waiting area while women were in labour. But for some reason, that day, even though the waiting room was so empty, so it was only you and one person. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was so empty, but the security were still like yeah. telling Jason to wait outside the building. So basically, we went in and we were like, "Oh yeah, we're in labour." And then the woman at reception was like, "Oh, if you want to just wait in the waiting room here for the emergency room to be ready." Yeah. And we were sitting in there for like about five minutes, and you were like crying at this point with the pain. Yeah. And there was another. They were like thirty seconds apart, like yeah. really strong. And there was no, another woman in there as well who was calm. I don't know if she was in labour. She was waiting for. Something she else. no, she was waiting for an appointment, but she was like, when you got kicked out, yeah, she, was she was like, was "That's like, so stupid." stupid. But anyway, the security guard came over and he was like, "Oh, you have to leave," and I was like, "Yeah, good luck to me. I'm not, I'm not like leaving you on your own. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not like." Because I was like, she's in agony, I'm not leaving her side. And, and like, like, we have, have masks on. Yeah, and he's like, you have to. And I was like, well, no, I don't, because the woman at reception just, like, told us to sit here. So and he was, like, obviously insisting, like, I was right, let me have a chat with the woman at the reception. I was like, what's going on? Like, why why did you tell us in here? And he's telling me not loud. And then she was like, oh, you can just sit in this room over here, the two of you, and, like, it's private. And then we sat in the room, and then two minutes later, another nurse came over, she was like, I need this room for her. Yeah, for consultation. So, so that was just it was stressful. So I was like, right, grand. And the security, I was like, can you just wait in the corridor there? And she could sit in the emergency room. So I was like, right, fuck it. And then I was waiting in the corridor. Then another security guard came over I was like you have to wait outside the building yeah and I was just, I literally looked at her and I was like do any of you know what you're doing here like why are you all sending but it, yeah places? it makes no sense because Jason was allowed with me to my appointment Jeez. like when I got my sweep in the tiny room with the yeah. doctor who was shaking her hand at all the scans and like any, any other appointments I even brought my mom to one but then all of a sudden when I'm actually in labor and like need my partner there yeah I wasn't they're not allowed in and then yeah the last time we were there there was literally about 10 blokes in that room yeah like when I had to breastfeed the last time went for to check my stitches there was like five men in yeah. there and it was packed like there was people standing up because there were no seats yeah so that and was i had to get my fucking tits out yeah jesus when we were in the bird and suite the midwives were all lovely yeah that was so like that, that made was, up for it yeah that was really nice like and the yeah because there was about 10 people when <laughs> in there when i was giving birth yeah. and there was like, loads of help when we were in the early labor ward like with the bath and yeah yeah, yeah. um like that was really nice but the after experience like this was the only part that was like traumatic for me my whole birth like my actual birth i don't think was traumatic but the like the follow-up the two nights afterwards mm. and obviously that's not the rotunda's fault because they were really understaffed but it was just hard because i wasn't able to pick her up so if she was crying and i rang the the bell it would take up to 10 minutes for someone to come oh, yeah, and at one stage i was like can you help me lift her and she just took off her swaddle and like didn't lift her over to me so i i had to like lift myself and ca literally carry her with one arm and support myself with the other into the bed with me because I had just had an epidural and yeah. I couldn't stand properly. I had no help walking back from the bathroom the night I gave birth. Yeah. So like I was holding onto the walls. It's really common as well to like faint when you go to the toilet for the first time and there was no one there with me like waiting for me to come out. And I wanted to go home the next day and I asked if I could go home early and they were like, no, you have to stay another night. It was really hard then. Um, but the second night was good because I didn't know that on a newborn second night they cluster feed for the literally the whole night like you have to do one boob then when that's a fit like emptied out you have to swap over Jeez, to the next yeah, one the, the whole night yeah. like swap over swap over uh, but the only reason i knew that was because one of the midwives she was really good she told me and she was like keeping me topped up with um uh, pain relief and she was like literally running around like getting me pads and all mm. so that was good but remember during the day when you asked for more pain relief for me i was literally it was like i was in labor all yeah, over again like screaming crying. crying in pain and no one really checked my stitches that no. often but they like had forgotten to give me my pain relief so i went like eight hours or something yeah. without any pills if you were allowed to stay overnight with me i'd want to either get a private room in a hospital just in case anything went wrong say if our next baby like got jaundice or something mm. really bad and needed to be in the NICU ward or do a home birth if we were getting like home visits from a community midwife then i would prefer that than rather st staying in the labor ward because that was a bit scary how has postpartum been so far postpartum has been really hard like i didn't think i'd be in so much pain uh, like the actual giving birth was fine like I didn't feel it because of the epidural and the epidural worked really well on me whereas some women you can still feel the pain but I literally didn't feel anything at all when mm. I was on the epidural which is really good didn't feel the sti me getting stitched up or like getting cut open or any of that or like even feel her coming out at all I felt sort of like the placenta hanging off my bum yeah a bit of pressure like yeah 
Yeah. But that was really it. The postpartum, like, I was in literal agony the whole time while, like, just starting breastfeeding, and that hurts as well. And you also get contractions, like, post birth, of your because your uterus is going back to its normal size. And I think the contra contractions are stronger if you do breastfeed too. There's a lot of other things, like, you're losing so much blood and you get and no sleep. All of those things combined, it's like really hard for your body to cope. So I was getting like mouth ulcers and really run down. But now I'm like feeling more, uh, feeling a lot better. Yeah, you're empty, like up and move around and stuff yeah does missy like her missy doesn't give a fuck she doesn't care she doesn't care at all i think she probably like smelled her head once yeah and that was it if she cries she looks she stares at her because yeah. she's just like where's that noise coming from yeah and she has tried to make biscuits on her before in the morning but i'm just like get off her yeah i'll um, say when she grows up a bit they'll like start having a like they'll start bonding and uh, have a cute little relationship yeah i sh i think she's more like curious because she's like why isn't this human giving me attention she's yeah, like why yeah. isn't this human trying to touch me yeah how long were you in labor for i was in active labor for that was probably only 45 minutes yeah she was in distress so they had to intervene oh yeah you're in the suite for about four hours right? the delivery suite, maybe three hours yeah like yeah. I took a nap on my epidural. Yeah. We went into the hospital at half ten. Half ten in the morning. And then she was born at half seven in the yeah. evening. It doesn't feel that long. Like you literally get, start your contractions and then you look at the time and it's like four hours have gone by. Like it's not, the time goes by really fast, I think. Do you remember the night you conceived? Yeah. <laughs> in Paris. We were in Paris and uh, we stayed in this like, in the artist area, Montmartre. Yeah. And we we got an Airbnb like over a sex shop. We got a bottle of wine and that was it. Anyway, what's the biggest surprise in motherhood so far? I think that I'm not worried as much as I thought I'd be. Like you're way more worried than I am. Yeah. Any mark that's on her or like she gets a spot. Constantly like, check if she's still breathing. Yeah. No, I do do that because she she's peaceful all the time. She's not making noise. I check if she's breathing. But I really thought that I would be like up the walls, like bringing her to the doctor, or, like the emergency room yeah, constantly. Yeah. But I think it's just because I'm like well versed on newborns that I just know that's yeah. that's normal. How many more children would you like? I want to have four. You want to have about eight million. I want five or six. Sure, play by ear. But four is fine. Yeah, we'll see what happens. That could change. Will you be doing a YouTube breastfeeding video? If we if people want me to, I uh, can do one. It seems like they do. There's loads of stuff that I thought that I was an expert on from like seeing people on the internet and like reading about it, but I actually had no idea. Especially the healing part, like healing my vagina. I had literally no idea what mm. I was doing. The cooling pads, for example, that I bought. I bought like 20 cooling pads from the Freedom Mom, like every single thing Freedom Mom, which is just like total consumerism bullshit because I got an infection from it. But yeah. you can only use cooling pads for 20 minutes at a time. So it's like, what was the point if you can't, so if you can't walk, you literally have to change your pads mm. in bed. So now I'm like, I'm way more prepared for my next pregnancy and I want to share with other people if they're like about to give birth, yeah. what I did because, and even with like, how do you clean your arse after you take a shit? Like no one tells you anything. Yeah. It's just like, do I wipe? Do I pat dry? Do I use a peri bottle? Like what the fuck am I supposed mm. to do? And I remember asking the midwife when I went for my per first piss after birth and I was like, what do I do? She was like, just pat dry. And then I, another time, my midwife was like, don't use toilet paper. So I'm like, what? What's the first thing you ate after giving birth? So I sent Jason to Musashi and I got a miso soup, veggie gyoza, veggie spring rolls, cucumber mini rolls, and avocado mini rolls. You didn't even eat the gyoza. No. You're stuffed after, you know, if you haven't eaten all day and you're, you're drugged up, like it's hard to yeah. have a big meal. What do you think if you were to fight about something about your daughter it would be? I'd say more so, not when she's a child, but more so when she's a teenager. I feel like we'll disagree on things that she's allowed to do. But um, I could turn into a worrier when she's like older. Yeah. And then you could be less, you could be more relaxed. I want to do couples counseling and stuff when we have mm. more kids, just to, so that we, cause it's important to like keep the relationship strong. Yeah, yeah. Cause we're supposed, supposed to be a partnership and a team. Yeah. But if you're fighting within your relationship, it's hard then to parent, what's the word, congruently. And I'd love to do parenting courses or stuff, mm. but ones that suit us, like gentle parenting courses, yeah. not like traditional ones. Like when we're trying to give our bath to the night, we had a little bicker. When we were giving her a bath? When we had a little bicker. What when, was it over? Uh, oh yeah, you were just like, Quick, quick, quick! And I was like, I'm, I'm going as fast as I can! <laughs> Are you going on maternity leave? And if so, for how long? Oh yeah. I told my manager that I wanted two weeks. And it's been two weeks now. So yeah. I'm basically finished my maternity leave. But I'm very lucky I can work from home. Like I didn't have to take maternity pay from the government because I had enough money. Like I have enough income mm -hmm. still coming. No, my maternity leave is basically over now. But I'm like, I'm in a privileged position where I can still continue to work on mind. 
Thing. Yeah. How do you plan to parent your child? Any set style you're following? I don't think so. Well, at the moment, we're doing intuitive, intuitively. Yeah. And we obviously are rejecting the whole like you can spoil your kids. If she cries, we pick her up and hug her. Like we let her sleep on top of us. Yeah. We just give her as much love as she yeah. needs. Yeah. It's been all love. That's how we've been like raising her so far. It's just like. But it's obviously will get harder like, once they can psychologically affect them through words and stuff. Of course. So I don't know. But I think we both have our head screwed on in that parent job. Yeah. Like, we like wouldn't be saying shit like that. Yeah. But you know, never know until it starts happening yeah, when course. it's like but I, there's loads of things in life where I'm like I need to study for this before I do it yeah so I don't know I don't know yet when the time comes obviously I don't have I don't have a lot of time to be thinking about it now but once she gets a bit older like I'll start yeah. reading up on it when she can start understanding I'll probably have to stop saying who's the most beautiful girl in the world oh yeah 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 <laughs> what age are you most and least excited for I want her to stop growing <laughs> I know yeah um, well I'm, I'm excited for when she's a toddler and like can start saying cute yeah, things yeah of course yeah I'm excited for that as well and when like we can do activities together like yeah. um, family bonding and stuff and she can actually remember it yeah and then when she's like seven or eight we, we can go on holidays that she'll remember and stuff like that and then it's red and oh and she's a teenager, teenager. Yeah. well I'm the mo mother, so she's gonna fucking hate me. But Teenage just, girls always like automatically the, the hate their mothers. The thought of like sending her to like secondary school is fucking terrifying. I know. No, but we'll live down the country as well, so. I want to have like make sure her life is fulfilled with other things than that I had growing up. Yeah. Do you know, because I was so obsessed with like being on my phone and attention from boys and all. Mm. Whereas if she gets into horse riding, mm. yeah. and make sure that her t we spend a lot of quality time. And I'm very lucky that I can spend a lot of quality time with yeah. them. And hopefully you can be a stay at home dad soon too. Did you end up shitting on the table? I thought when I started going into labour that I wouldn't be conscious of me shitting. But when they first came in, they were like, "Okay, start." I literally was like trying to clench my bum, which you shouldn't do at all because you're not fully pushing then. Yeah. But I was really like, I'm gonna fart real loud. So I was like, <laughs> I actually was conscious of it. And I know that I was like letting letting a few rip. And then I was like, I don't know if they're shits or not. So I could have shit in the table. I well, don't like, know. They've seen, they see it every day. I know, but it was real just like, I, I won't, I'm sure I won't be as nervous the next time, but this time like, I was nervous about shitting on the table. When you get an epidural, you have to get a catheter because you can't, you don't have control over your bladder and your bladder needs to be empty when you give birth. My urine bag like spilled at one point and it like went off I, I couldn't feel obviously you can't really feel from your pelvis down but I just felt like warmth on my yeah. feet and I was like did something spill because I feel like real warm on my feet and they're like yeah we just spilled your piss bag so they had to change the sheets I had to get my waters broken as well and when my waters got broken she all her shit just like flooded out onto the table so they had to change the sheets then so they had to change the sheets twice basically oh. there was a lot of shit and piss what's your thoughts on that first shite i got messages being like the first shite is so hard did it's it take like, you three days or something yeah i i basically held in a shit for three days and jason was like bringing me large cups of coffee every day and i was eating vegetables mm. and like yeah. greasy foods that would make you shit normally and I do shit like once or twice a day anyway so it was amazing that my body was like holding it in and because I wanted my first shit to be at home because the hospital bathrooms are like mad cold and like uncomfortable so when I did take my first shit like I was on painkillers it wasn't that bad but it did feel like because you don't have like full feeling yet and everything feels like mixed up like your arse feels like your vagina and your vagina feels like your fucking belly button it doesn't you know it doesn't feel right down there so then when I was shitting it felt like I was shitting out an organ or like something was about to fall out or my uterus was about to out but it wasn't sore it wasn't as sore as I thought it would be because a lot of people were like it's like fucking shit and razor blades but I I had stool softeners I was drinking lots of orange juice and stuff so it was fine <laughs> is she She's hungry so cute no I think she's just waking up okay did you crave wine after birth no I didn't crave alcohol until like the last two days I had my margarita but I literally am drunk after like one drink and then we got a bottle of wine last night and I had about half a glass and I didn't want any more I actually don't like the feel of being drunk and getting drunk that easily isn't nice and I woke up this morning like literally with a headache did so, you? yeah yeah have you got any sleep since she's came? She's had some bad nights, but yeah. usually she only wakes up twice. Ooh, oh, bless you. What's wrong with the baba, hey? <laughs> so we have had good sleep. Like I, we had a great sleep last night. Yeah, we had a great sleep. She slept from half ten to half to four in the morning, and then she just wakes up to feed and change and a change. She's looking for a boob. Okay. Oh, you can just flap her on here. Zoom did not Oh. You talk about her. How would you describe the love you have for her? So I did have a think about it. I spend a lot. I think I spend a normal amount. Probably everyone probably does like ruminating over past mistakes or being like oh i could have done this differently yeah, or like yeah, yeah. oh i wish i didn't drop out of college and all this other shit once your baby comes and you feel so much love for her, it's like every single mistake you've made doesn't even matter ha it doesn't matter because it's led up to the moment yeah. of her and like the uh, chances of a child being born and like in such a hostile environment because the uterus literally fights 
uh, fertility now. So for her to survive that, and also with like your ge our genetic makeup together, mm. only would have happened if I've done I've done all of these things to begin with. Like if I didn't drop out of college, I wouldn't have started in an urban and met you and yeah, you know all these other things. So like we never would have had her. So I I literally haven't thought about my past life or like feel any shame or regret for my yeah. past self at all and I completely fully forgive myself for everything because it gave me her. I feel everything that I thought before about what I wanted to be and what I wanted to do in life like just doesn't matter anymore because I feel like yeah, my only purpose in life is to be her father and just like every time I think about doing anything it's just doing it with her and, and making memories with her and stuff like that, do you know what I mean? And I also don't care what anyone else thinks of me anymore. Like I usually things would like I get a bit worked up, mm. but now I just feel immense rage or yeah anger for people if anyone mentions her. Like yeah. that's literally it. Like yeah, I don't care about me at all. I'm yeah. just like fucking say what you want about me. That's fine. Yeah, me too. You can stop it. That's not the record button. No, I pressed the record button. Oh shit. No, that's the camera taking a picture button. Oh.